Hey folks, Justin with Effective Remote Work here. Today, we're talking about writing notes in Markdown. For a number of years, you had the capability to write in rich text in many note-taking applications. Evernote is still very much on that camp of rich text. Notion is there too. You don't really see any formatting languages. You just click a button and boom, you have bold text or there you've got a link or an image is embedded there. But many note-taking applications are going a simpler route, and that is using Markdown. So if you've never figured out what Markdown is or how to use it, this is the video for you today. If you're a veteran user too, stick around because refreshing the basics is always a good idea as I'm finding for myself. And also we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why using Markdown is beneficial over a rich text approach uh, in taking your notes. But first, a little history lesson. What is Markdown? Markdown was originally created as a simple way to write for the web. If you had a blog a number of years back before all these fancy WYSIWYG editors that are in nearly every content management system these days, you had to write your blog posts or convert them to HTML before you could get them on the web. And if you've ever written HTML by hand before, you know that that's not a fun experience. It's very, very tedious at times. Markdown was created by John Gruber as an easy way to write for the web that easily and quickly converts to HTML. Basically, Gruber took a number of concepts of HTML that are pertinent to writing, like headings and certain formatting, links, and so forth, and then created a way to convert that text easily into HTML. So you could just copy and paste it into your website, and there you go. As time has gone on, multiple flavors, so to say, of Markdown have emerged, such as Common Mark or the GitHub flavored Markdown, Multi Markdown, etc. There's actually quite a large number of different flavors of Markdown. We're not going to get into the differences of these today, but just be aware they exist. Many of them extend on the capabilities of the original Markdown specification, and some of them have different implementations on how they do things. But generally, what we're talking about today should apply to all concept versions of Markdown that you run across in any application. Let's take a look at some of those key concepts. First, headings. If you're familiar with HTML at all, you have H1, H2, H3 tags, so on and so forth, um, that you have to wrap around the text you want in there. So it has to be at the beginning and the end. Well, in Markdown, the easy way to write a heading is just a pound symbol at the start of the line. So if you want a heading one, you have pound symbol and a space, and then your text that gives you heading one. Or if you want a heading level two, you do two pound symbols. If you want heading three, three, so on and so forth. Really quick and easy to get your headings out there. Formatting, if you're looking to bold text, you have two options. You can use the uh, asterisks and put two asterisks around the text or two of the underscores. Both of those will give you the text in bold uh, whenever that text is processed or sometimes in most modern markdown editors, you'll get a live preview of it. Italics is very similar in that you just use one. So you have one asterisk surrounding the text you want to italicize or one underscore. I suppose one, we'll jump back here for a second. Uh, one thing to be aware of too is that in Markdown, there's not a way to underline text because on the web, underlines signif signify links. And so you're not going to get like a word ability to underline text. You're only going to see underlines in Markdown when there is a link that's formed. Another common formatting uh, element here are lists. There's two primary lists that you can use inside of HTML. There are a couple others, but they're not replicated in standard Markdown. They are ordered lists and unordered lists. Ordered lists go in order of numbering, one, two, three. Uh, so you can see on the left there, you just do one dot space your list item, two dot space list item. 
And then unordered lists are just a dash or an asterisk in a list format like that. So it's just asterisk list item. So they're very easy to create. And instead of having to do this wild dance with HTML where there's a number of nested elements there, you just very easily and quickly add it in as you're typing. The beauty of these lists is that in many note-taking softwares is they automatically do the numbering for you, or if you start an unordered list, as soon as you hit enter, it'll jump to the next line. So you don't have to think about creating the list. Another common element that you can create with Markdown are block quotes. You basically use the right angle bracket. So as you can see on the screen here, we have a couple of different examples of a block quote. So this would generate a regular block quote. And if you use it on multiple lines together like this, this will generate a multi-line block quote. So when this renders, you'll see it all is part of the same block quote. Very handy, especially if you're looking to call out a specific item in a, a note that you have, or if you're are particularly quoting uh, something from somebody else. Linking, I would say, is the second most complicated formatting structure in Markdown. The most complicated would be tables, which we're not getting into in this video. Um, but as you can see here, the formatting structure and the syntax for it is really not all that complex. Uh, it just If you're new to it, it can take a little while to remember how do I do links and where do I put what and do I use the square brackets here and the parentheses here. It's okay if you get a little mixed up on it. There's a ton of resources, including this video, out on the web. Uh, if you forget, just go ahead and look back uh, at it. I remember when I was first starting uh, with Markdown, linking was the thing I had the hardest time remembering what to do for it. So basically the way a link is structured is you have these, uh, the square brackets around your link text, and then in parentheses you have the URL. Keep in mind there is no space here. This is all one block, so to say. I mean, you can have spaces in your text here, but uh, when this is um, printed, then you'll just see the link text with the underline and uh, it would be clickable uh, and take you to this URL. Another cool thing about Markdown is you have the capability to do reference style links. So if you're in the middle of a document and you don't want to see lots of different uh, URLs and long text kind of obscuring and, and breaking up uh, what, you're, what you're doing and what you're reading, what you're writing there, you can use a reference uh, link like this. So it's basically the same format of, for the link text within uh, square brackets. And then instead of parentheses, you put it in square brackets here, and this is the name of a reference. So then you can have text in between, write some more, whatever you need to do. And then at the bottom of the document, you can put your in square bracket brackets, your reference uh, that you see up here, and then the URL. So when this markdown is generated, you'll get the link populated up here for this link text. This is an incredibly flexible way, especially, like I said, if you have large URLs, you don't want to mess up the flow of the text that's there. So if you're primarily working in plain text, this is something you're probably going to want to use uh, in a very regular basis versus the other way of generating links. Images are also handled similarly to links you have the same format here where you have the square brackets with the text in the middle and then the URL in parentheses. The interesting difference though is you have one, an exclamation point right at the beginning of it that signifies that it's an, it's an image. And two, instead of the link text you have here, you have the alt text. So the alt text is what you get when you hover over an image. So if you're uploading a markdown document to a website and you go ahead and hover over that text, this is what you're going to see in that little hover over tooltip. You can also take the same approach with images. 
uh, with reference links here too. So you would just replace this with the square brackets and your reference. And then down at the bottom of the document, you can put the link to the, or the URL to the image there as well. So honestly, that's really the basics of what you need for understanding Markdown to get started taking notes. How does this benefit your note taking? Well, I'm gonna hop out of presentation mode here real quick, and we're gonna jump into the document that I'm working in here in Obsidian. Now, if you didn't notice, this is an Obsidian presentation that we were going through, and this is all written in Markdown. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the document I've got three points I'd like to chat with you about. First, I really feel like Markdown gives you the ability to quickly capture your information. What do I mean by that? Well, the easier that you can get all the information out that you need and format it the way that you want, the less friction that you're going to run into in your note-taking system. In any productivity system or any habit or whatever you're trying to build, the more friction there is, the more difficulty you're going to have doing something. And so if it takes a long time to get something out or list it out or whatever you need it to be, uh, because you have to do all this goofy formatting or finding the right buttons in the WYSIWYG editor, uh, it, you're probably not going to do that thing. So the beauty of Markdown is if you're popping into a note-taking app like Obsidian or Drafts, you can literally just start taking bullet list notes by typing out a bullet list. So if I go in here and I just hit this, um, the dash and I say, here's an item of thought. And here's something else. You can see that I very, very was easily to, able to get that out. Now, if I needed to come out and, you know, bold something here to say, hey, I want to keep track of this. Of course, I highlighted it incorrectly, so it's not going to show up. Uh, and then I just want to put some emphasis on this here. Uh, it's really easy to just uh, utilize Markdown in the in these instances. But the other thing that I find helpful, in addition to being able to get your thoughts out more quickly and format them in a helpful way that's readable, is the fact that when you go back through a Markdown document, it's very readable in plain text. You don't have a lot of formatting that is flat out mucking up your plain text document here. Uh, you can f just read it. I mean, this entire document you're seeing on the screen is the presentation that we just went through. There's no fancy formatting or metadata or anything in here that you have to sort through. It's literally just plain markdown. So as you can see, I mean, we have lots of different ways to um, show things in here. You can see I've got italics and bold. And if you see this, you know it's italics, even if it, this wasn't italicized, because you can see that it has just one asterisk. Same thing with bold. It has two asterisks. And the block quotes, I'll show you what these look like too. I'll remove the code block here so you can see what a block quote actually looks like in Obsidian. Now, every note-taking software is going to render these differently. Obsidian kind of makes them more grayed out, but you can see that a block quote uh, exists there very easily without having to try to figure out, okay, what is that? And, and have all this mental overhead to try to parse through formatting language uh, in something. The other reason that I think Markdown is beneficial for note-taking in particular is that it's nearly standardized across the board. You tend to have two camps of applications for note-taking. You have Markdown-based applications and you have rich text formatting applications. And many, many, many applications these days are erring on the side of using Markdown. And because it's a very common standard, even though there's many different flavors of it, they all rip back to the same concepts. Because it's a common standard, you can port your data in between those applications very easily. If I wanted to take notes in Bear for a season, I can export them and import them into Obsidian, 
And then if I wanted to get them out of Obsidian and put them into the archive, I could at a later point in time as well. Uh, if I'm trying to use something like Notion, that's going to be very difficult to try to move all my notes into Rome, or it's going to be difficult to get all my notes out of Rome and put them into Evernote if that's what I'm using, because they all use kind of their own proprietary formatting. And so having Markdown being a core standard for note taking allows you to leverage different applications for different purposes. Another interesting thing that I have seen is that some folks are using multiple note applications to access the same library of notes. For example, you can open up a library and work primarily out of it in uh, Zettler, but then open that same vault of notes in Obsidian and see all the links that are going on in the graph view. That's really the power of having a standard like Markdown be the foundation of your note taking tool because you can port it between applications very easily. Or if worst comes to worst and you don't wanna use another note-taking application, or if you can't use a different note-taking application than plain text, you have the ability to very easily read your notes, plain and simple. You can see what's a heading, you can see what's a quote, you can see what's a link. And then if you wanted to convert it to something else like a PDF or an HTML file using a tool like Pandoc, you could. That's really it for today's primer on writing notes in Markdown. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos on productivity and note taking and remote work. Also, I would love to hear your questions in the comments about writing notes, about productivity software and tools. I would love to help you figure out your note-taking and productivity workflows here on the Effective Remote Work YouTube channel. My name is Justin. Thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you in the next video.